Hello and welcome back to this Cube Savvy YouTube channel. Today we are talking about purchase orders. This is going to be an introduction to Shopify purchase orders, how you can leverage the system to keep track of incoming stock, make sure that you're getting the right quantities and keeping track of discrepancies, as well as how to set up suppliers and vendors within Shopify. So here we go. Let's dive into it. Here we are within the Shopify purchase orders. And as you can see, I've navigated into products, then purchase orders from the admin panel. As you can see, our existing purchase orders, ones that we have received, ones that are closed, and once we add a new one, we'll see that here. Now to go ahead and create a new purchase order, let's head into create new purchase order. And here I've already assembled a new purchase order. So up here we have our supplier. You can click on and add a new supplier for this purchase order, which also will save the details of your product. So cost and tax rates, et cetera, to this supplier. Now we can also view the supplier and make an edit. As far as I know, this is the only place that you can make an edit with to the supplier within Shopify. So if you know better, make sure to leave a comment on how other people can do that. We've also selected our destination warehouse. So when we place this purchase order, the incoming inventory will be allocated to that warehouse at your destination. We've got the currency, payment terms that you could put in there. We've set an estimated arrival from, the, from our supplier at August 31st. We've got shipping carrier information and tracking number if you happen to know that. Down here, I've already added some products. And once you add a new product, uh, so let's go ahead and put a new product within here. We've already added that. Let's add this one here. If the product has not yet been allocated or assigned in, to the supplier, now you can update the costs here and that will save to the supplier profile next time. So we've got eight variants here that we're going to order. Go ahead and enter the quantity. You could also enter a separate supplier SKU if they have a specific SKU that they're using to be able to, if that's the format that you need to supply to your supplier, enter that there. Uh, again, these are all going to save for the next time that we select the supplier. So now where you have additional details down here, any kind of notes that we might want to include as well as tags. And over here, we can see that there would be the cost summary. You can add adjustments such as a shipping cost or landed cost. Now there isn't any kind of distributed cost. And as you'll see, once we place this purchase order and go to check it in, there is some limitations to the way that Shopify handles purchases. So the other thing that I wanna show very quickly is the difference between this type of purchase order creation and on the SKU Savvy side. In this case, we are connected with our Shopify store to a SKU Savvy account. And here we have our vendor information, which is already pulling from what we've got available. You also do have the inventory information for a specific product, as well as some additional information such as already expected, committed, uh, average sales, et cetera, for the products. And we can turn on suggestions, which is a big one, and then get suggestions from the system on how many we should actually be purchasing based off of what we've got on hand, what's committed, what's expected, how fast it's selling, our lead time from the vendor. All of those things are factored in during the purchase order creation. So let's bounce back over to our Shopify purchase order creation, and we're gonna create the purchase order and then start into our check-in process. So we'll create this, and now let's head over into our check-in process. So here we have our purchase order already created. We're gonna head in and convert this draft into something that has been ordered. So we're gonna mark this as ordered and indicate that our vendor has now received it and we're ready to actually check this in. I wanna point out a couple of additional actions up here. So you can export the PDF of this purchase order. So additional options, we could duplicate this in the future as either a purchase order or a transfer, or we could come ahead and make edits to this purchase order, add new product, update our reference number, et cetera. So we're gonna go ahead and get out of the editing here and check this in. So now we're gonna just click on receive inventory. And within the inventory receiving, as you can see, we do have a couple of options here where we could just receive all product at one time or reject all product. We can see what we've, as we go down through here, we can see which ones we've accepted, which ones we're going to reject. So all of these have easy options to either accept or reject the stock. Now, a couple of limitations here, as you can see, you know, we don't know where this inventory is stored. If you did have perishable items, there is no lot tracking or serialization for any of this purchase order check-in here. So 
you would just be manually checking this in. Now, I will also say if you happen to receive more than what you expected to receive, there isn't a great way of seeing those discrepancies unless you come into the purchase order itself. So we're going to go down through here and receive the majority of this. Now, I'm also going to under receive a few of these items as well as to over receive a few of these items. And that way we have a good idea of what this is going to look like once we have gone through all of this. It's OK, so we're going to indicate that we have now received all of these units here. There also is a limitation that there is no barcode scanning here. So you really need to make sure that the right products are coming in at the right time. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and save this now. And once we save the purchase order, I should also say that during this time, OK, so we've partially checked this in. Now let's go ahead and check out one of these products and just take a look at this product's inventory from this purchase order. So here we have the incoming uh, as well as just all of our available inventory. So if we hover over and click on incoming, you can see now under this savvy warehouse, we have that purchase order with four units on it. You could click into it here. So you can see how that affects the incoming stock once we place the purchase order. You can also look at the adjustment history. And as you can see here, as we've made changes and updates and actually received some of this purchase order earlier, uh, you can see how that affects your on-hand available and other inventory levels. Now, unfortunately, Shopify has not opened up the API, which would be the system to connect with external uh, QuickBooks or SKU Savvy or any other number of systems that might affect purchase orders. Uh, so you cannot do that. However, you can use an import template. So if we go over to, and this is just the template that Shopify provides for inventory, you can see here that if we were to update the incoming stock levels on this import template and then go over back into Shopify and import this, we could influence all of our incoming uh, inventory stock levels. Let's take a look now from SKU Savvy, for instance, if we placed this purchase order, the incoming stock that you place here isn't actually added to your Shopify inventory, unfortunately. That is only influenced through either Stocky or Shopify until they go ahead and make that available. So for instance, if you're using SKU Savvy, uh, especially with perishable items where you might need lot tracking, serialization, et cetera, you can still get an export of your PO and then you could import it to your Shopify stock value. Otherwise, there really isn't any kind of need to use the Shopify purchase orders. If you have SKU Savvy and you can go ahead and now check in all of your stock that you've got. So if we go ahead and check this in, market has delivered just so we can get a side by side comparison. This is now a method that we can use and see exactly where we need to put this stock away according to what we've already stored within this warehouse. So we can just simply receive and you also could use barcode scanning, lot tracking, serialization, et cetera, at this point. And now we're going to go ahead and just select our bin and put this stock away. And we can see previously where we've held this inventory. And now just go down through, we could print off a receiving ticket for this product uh, just to show you what some of those settings look like. We can scan the item, scan the bin, uh, and have our custom template for printing out the receiving stock. All right, let's go back into Shopify now. Let's go ahead and continue checking this in. So now we can see that we have accepted, rejected, unreceived stock here. Let's say for whatever reason, you know, we didn't receive everything. Uh, you can also see down here the timeline of everything that's happening with this purchase order. And let's go ahead and now receive the inventory, which is going to put it away and keep the rest of these open for what we're actually expecting. Now, if we go back into our purchase order here, so we can see that we still have some products that are left open. But let's go ahead and now just close this out. So if you have partially received this, you don't know if the rest are coming and you wanna just close it out, then we can click on close purchase order and that's just gonna close it out so that now everything is confirmed. And now if we look into, we can see what was received, rejected and unreceived. Now, unfortunately, there's not a great way to just see products at this point, what was received, rejected. But that's a pretty good overview of the Shopify purchase order and check-in process. Hopefully that was helpful. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you on the next video.